The band Blondie emerged from the New York club scene. Actually, it might be a better record. Who knows? Uh, to become one of the most popular bands in all of rock. And the focus of much of uh, Blondie's attention has been lead singer Debbie Harry, as you undoubtedly know, who's just recently released her first solo album called Cuckoo. And as part of our Celebrity Byline series, we asked Carl, uh, uh, Cal Rudman, it is, uh, publisher of the Friday Morning Quarterback, the music industry's leading programming guide, uh, and a friend of Debbie's, to profile her, as they say in the trade, for us. So here she is. You may recognize the woman behind the dark glasses. Her face has graced the covers of more magazines than any other female artist in the history of rock and roll. The members of the band Blondie, including Debbie Harry and Chris Stein, have been responsible for the sale of over 15 million records worldwide. Five hit albums in a row, four number one singles in this country alone. Now she has embarked on her first solo project, an album called Cuckoo. We caught up with Debbie at the Power Station a recording studio in New York City where she recorded the album. And a little later, she will perform the new single. Haven't seen you in a while, Debbie. You and Chris, I've been to the wrestling matches at Madison Square Garden, and you haven't been around. No, I, I miss all the good stuff, too. I was away. Yeah. We were working. Uh, recording the solo album with Cheek? Mm, that partially, and uh, we were in Switzerland working tapes for the album. Now Rogers and Bernie Edwards of Chic, the producers of your album, have wanted to be rock musicians for a long time. And you had a big hit with Rapture, which was rhythm and blues uh, oriented. So you were heading in their direction, they were heading in yours. So how did you two get together, Debbie? Well, it, we met Nylon Bernard uh, right here at the power station a couple years ago when we were recording um, Beat to the Beat with Mike Chapman. And uh, so we, we got along very well and they were They've been, uh, you know, really good friends. We've just sort of hung out with them over the past couple of years and uh, talked about all these different influences in our music. And when we started talking about uh, our musical ideas and possibly working together and collaborating, it really became obvious that, you know, since Chris and I were so heavily affected by all of the sort of city music that we've been hearing and all the, you know, R&B and, and funk that we really liked, and we're trying to bring that into rock in our way, and they were trying to put rock into their music. It was very obvious that we should collaborate. Debbie, as you know, I'm from the streets of the North Philadelphia ghetto, and you, of course, uh, are a street lizard from New York. Uh, your lyrics in this album are absolutely tuned into the street vernacular. How did that work into your lyrics in this album? Well, it first happened because I was evicted. No. <laughs> uh, it just, uh, we're interested in that, and, and we're part of city life, and we have a lot of friends that, uh, you know, are doing, like, the graffiti art that uh, we used uh, on a couple of our videotapes in the past. And um, I think that being out of Blondie and working as a lyricist, you know, Blondie has a, a real sort of mission in life, you know. And um, so when I started writing lyrics that weren't for Blondie, um, in a way I felt uh, I could be sort of um, more serious. How do you feel about doing a solo thing after being with a band for so many years? Um, well, I, I really don't feel like it's a solo project. Uh, I feel like it's more like a collaboration. And uh, of course I'm working with Chris, so we were writing our songs together, and Niall and Bernard are writing their songs together and then producing the whole mishmash. <laughs> you have a new direction in your music and certainly a fascinating new direction in this album cover. Uh, how did that all come about? You mentioned Giger before, Hans Giger. Yeah, well, we met him here in New York, too, on 57th Street at a gallery show when he was touring with his Academy Award for Alien. And... Um, He's a very, very nice guy. And yeah, he has a display in the Museum of Modern Art also. Yeah. The entire world of rock was somewhat amused to find out that this cover was banned in England. And the world of music and radio in the United States, we lost our minds when we heard <laughs> about this. They, they can't sell it in the stores. Would you tell us about that? Oh, no, they can sell it in the stores. Can they? they can't have any posters or ads in the uh, trains or the train stations. And they're not allowed to show the cover on uh, television. 
and uh, I think it's because it's such a uh, change in approach or change in image for uh, me and uh, they said that it was um, too disturbing that was it. it was too disturbing but I can understand it because uh, we have a blondie has a following of a lot of like eight-year-olds you know little kids you know, little kids so they thought that that would be too disturbing for them. Well, it's certainly a new direction for you. Yeah. Uh, well, it's fantasy. It's clearly fantasy for me. I mean, I think that anyone who looks at it knows that it's sci-fi and fantasy. And with H.R. Giger's name on it, and what else could it be? The question that's very serious to me. What I'm leading up to is the drug problem of use in the United States. I yield to no person in my respect for your credibility and being in touch with the streets. Uh, you've been there and back, and I think a lot of the people in the audience will respect the words that you have to say, and it's a big problem in the United States with a whole generation. The thing that, that prompts kids to take drugs, I think, from my experience, is that you're searching and exploring and you're trying to you know, find out about everything and, and be aware of your environment and be cool and at the same time, and, and et cetera. Um, and it's basically, I think, kids are victimized by it because it's big business. And it, it's they also... They marketed. Yeah, it's marketed and it's very political in, in some ways, the way that it's marketed, um, because the people that are the weakest and the most susceptible and the most unhappy are the ones that are going to get it. I think that if uh, everyone had um, sort of, I don't know if it's religion is the right word, but if they had sort of like a ritualistic kind of attitude uh, and development of um, 